So today I want to show you um, how the equipment accelerometer uh, is um, how is this installed? It's installed. Uh, it's true that I've already installed it. The two of these accelerometers already installed. Um, basically, I wanted to take you through the process. Um, I mounted um, this a platform that's already existing uh, at an observatory. So, uh, with the provision of these um, rails that were made with metal in it, it's such that the base is um, opens up and then the top encloses a little bit um, and it has pressure bolts and knots which are brought at the base that you slide into and uh, I'll show you one of this. It's just like this. Just like this, bolts, broad base, and you slide into, and then you turn it, and then it locks. And the way they are designed is that the direction that it locks has a line in the middle. So it should tell you that you have currently aligned it and it can lock, and then now you can apply your, your nut. So I fixed two of that, um, one side on the other side, um, and then hooked it up onto this aluminium bar which is also designed to work basically the same principle and this tends and it locks yeah and you can just remove it so two and then the dimensions of the base um, is, is about 283 millimeters on each side so it's a square and then 40 uh, 40 centimeters on the diagonal so if basic if, if done well and you mount this you come and set it down the cilometer the base sits perfectly this is a cilometer um, 61 CL 61 by Vaisala we have um, other models uh, that came before uh, 31 if I'm not lying uh, um, I've had just a little experience with that one so but this one I've installed a couple and what does the cilometer does? It shoots up a laser from the opening that you see and that points straight into the, the sky, onto the clouds. And then the amount of the laser that is back scattered is recorded. Uh, it, so it has a transmitter that does that and then it has a receiver that records that, the back scattering. And then with that, we are able to determine the height of the boundary layer. So, this is operational. I'm going to open the back of it and show you what you can see inside. If you open it, this is what you can see. And then you open this with a bolt, uh, with a screw. It has a special screw that comes with it. Um, I don't have it yet, so uh, I will not be able to open you. But then basically what is here is the circuit uh, switch. I could have showed you the trans. trans meter also and then the the lens uh, through which the laser is shot so from here from the back comes your data cable and then uh, the power cable and the uh, CLB 611 it's also an alternating current from here to the other side um, yeah so you know, so always make sure that so after you've installed and you want to turn on this, you turn on from this side. It's uh, I don't have a, 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 um, a flash screwdriver to open and show you where you turn it on, but it's basically very simple. And uh, yeah, you turn it on. Make sure this is always closed. Uh, this mount I prepared is just to be able to adapt it to this platform. Otherwise, the standard mount is like to prepare a slab, which I've done a couple. I'll show you at some other sites. And then the front part, the cilometer, is like this. And then you see the window from which the laser points up. I've changed a couple of these windows um, when they had issues. Uh, yeah, so this part also you open with the same, um, the same screwdriver that comes with it. Um, and the cables are routed you have the operations and maintenance port um, or where you can connect your 
the data cable and configure, do any configuration or maintenance. Um, this the power that comes is routed back here, an interface unit, uh, and in the data, um, the data port also. So uh, basically, yeah. So it accepts electrical power AC to uh, 240 between 220 to 240, which is fed in using this cable and then the data cable that comes with it, just to get it onto. There and make sure there is a laser warning. You don't look directly, or you don't use any lens um, on the surface of this on 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 the part where the laser comes out. So you just have to be careful. This uh, for safety reasons. Yeah. So what it does is that I'll show you a data of this um, afterwards. You don't see the laser, of course, but it's mapping continuously, mapping the boundary layer. So I'll show you a data for you to see. Two of these are installed um, for you to see what it's basically doing. So here I'm back to my PC and I wanted to show you, uh, I want to show you how the data looks like we have in the time as us here and we have on the verticals we have the height in meters and so here we can see it's able to tell you the boundary layer and um, that is plotted all along um, and what is up is the free atmosphere so the laser that is shot hits the boundary the bus scattered is what I'm showing you. So the bus scattered laser is what I'm showing you. And at the height, so you can see relatively between 0 to 5,000, you have like a 500 meters. The boundary layer is here. And in the night, you see that it changes. Um, it will it's go much higher. Yeah, in the night. So, um, yeah. Just to show you um, a plot of the back scattered laser, and then uh, you see the depolarization. I want to show you what it looks like. The depolarization and um, plot it also hides against time. You see how it looks like. So here, what sense can you make of it? So um, all the activities that is going on here is where there is the turbulence. Where here is where is the mixing. Here is where. You have um, you have all the moisture from the immediate sub uh, surface that's rising, and all the wind and all the pollution uh, mixed together. You have all these activities that clearly shows um, in this in this area. And if there was rain, you see that um, it becomes you you'd have seen a higher or a more deep a more polarized which is near the 0 0.25 uh, you see it pouring if there is rain at a particular point in time um, so yeah this helps to delineate the boundary layer uh, that fluctuates and changes um, over time so for this same equipment or instrument there is um, there is um, a laser temperature we mo monitor the laser temperature or monitor the pulse energy we monitor the status of the alarm, we monitor internal status, we monitor the warnings and the tilt, um, which if it's off will give us a good uh, sign of what's happening and then the window, the transmission of the window. So there's also the background radiation that is monitored, the internal humidity, if it rises, um, it, should be, it should just be very low, close to zero as much as, as, much as possible. But between 30, 40, uh, 50, it's, it's normal. If it rises beyond, um, we, we we have to go and check what's happening. Um, so yeah, we monitor all these things, the window nature, and uh, yeah. So just to show you a um, few things about the Doppler wind lidar. Well, okay. So sure.